If you received any Social Security checks in 1985, you will get a 10. Today I'm going to talk about what I got for Christmas. I got two nice photography books, one by Ansel Adams and one by Andy Warhol. Let's talk first about the Ansel Adams book. This is a very nice uh, large format book. It's basically Ansel Adams' autobiography. And the way it worked out, he started working on this book about, um, oh, say, 10 years ago. <clears throat> and he finished it up just last fall. And then he died a couple of months thereafter. So it's truly uh, the testament to his life. Now, when Ansel Adams started out, it was, uh, he was born in around 1900. He lived to be about 80. And when he started doing his work, photography at that point was viewed as a poor relation of painting. People made a great effort to make photographs look like paintings. They would make them fuzzy. They would pose people in classical clothes and with pieces of sculpture and so on. Ansel Adams brought in the new era of uh, tr treating the photograph exactly like what it is, trying to get exact and precise photographs of natural objects. He was a great naturalist and is probably best known for his pictures that he took in uh, Yosemite National Park. Here's one of his first photographs. I don't know if you can see this very well. It's called a uh, picture of Half Dome, which is a, a large rock in Yosemite National Park. And uh, it doesn't show up too well on TV. But if you do look at this book, the pictures in there are really beautiful, really fantastic photographs of nature, primarily. Uh, you might wonder, is Ansel Adams' style of photography out of date? Well, no, not really. There's still great room for these, these beautiful photographs. And uh, his prints actually sell now for a great deal of money. We're talking five, ten thousand dollars $10,000 a print. You might think, why would anybody pay for a print? Can't you just buy the book and have all his pictures for the, the cover price of 30 or 40 bucks? Well, th th he actually worked very hard at, at making his prints. At once he said, the negative is science the, producing the print from the negative is the art. Um, he always shot in black and white and was not too interested in shooting in color. He said an interesting thing about this, which I like because I still like to shoot my pictures in black and white, even though it's increasingly hard to get black and white developing. He said, color photography usually takes advantage of the obvious. Black and white photography fares better as its inherent abstraction takes the viewer out of the morass of manifest appearance and encourages inspection of the shapes, textures, and qualities of light characteristic of the region. So this is a very interesting book, a beautiful book, and I'm having a lot of fun reading through it. Adams has a nice way of describing his life. Each chapter is on one area, and he traces it through the whole history of it. Now, the other photography book that I want to talk about is by Andy Warhol. It's called America. Now, uh, probably most of us have heard of Andy Warhol. He became famous as a pop artist in the 1960s. You might say that he invented pop art. If you want to see an original Andy Warhol picture, you might take a trip to Richmond, where in the Virginia Museum, they have a lovely new wing, uh, which contains a lot of pop art, a lot of contemporary art. I was just there this weekend. It, was, uh, it made me proud of the state that we have such a good collection. And they have a nice picture by Andy Warhol, which is uh, called Triple Elvis, three pictures of Elvis. Now, in this book, America, Andy Warhol has quite a different approach to photography from Ansel Adams. Instead of producing these fine negatives with l large format negatives and making painstaking prints, Andy Warhol walks around with a Polaroid. Okay? He just takes Polaroid pictures. And this book is primarily, well, you can't see it too well. It's photos of, that's a picture of Trigger. OK, these are photos of uh, celebrities. That's Hulk Hogan there, I guess, and so on, things like that. The pictures are sort of throwaway quality and really not very interesting as photographs. But the interesting thing is Andy Warhol's attitude towards all this. His text in this book is really very interesting. It's sort of mindless, but it, it's very, very perceptive, very good the way he expresses himself. Let me just lay a couple of quotes on you. I keep waiting, like everybody else is, for a really great person in political life. I watch TV on Sunday mornings to look for politicians that I could like, but all I see are guys who are scared to lose their jobs just trying to talk for 30 minutes without getting fired, which is pretty well the way it is. Now, here's another nice quote. 
I love it when you ask actors, what are you doing now? And they say, I'm between roles. To be living life between roles, that's my favorite. And here's some other nice things in here about getting famous and so on. Probably most of us have heard of Andy Warhol's remark, everybody should be famous for 15 minutes. Um, I, I, would, I would highly recommend the Ansel Adams book. Uh, it's a nice coffee table book for the quality of its photographs. And I would also recommend the Andy Warhol book. His way of expressing himself is very interesting, and he has some very interesting insights into American life as we move beyond the age of art and into the age of media. Thank you for being with me again on Brain Food.